Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I wanted to feature a clip from last night's Splinterlands TV, where we were joined by a special guest, friend of the channel, Dwayne Cunningham, here on YouTube and in the Splinterlands community, where we talked about how much could land be worth and went through some interesting data points around that and i definitely think it's probably worth sticking around to the end of this video clip to see some of the data that we covered and with that being said let's uh let's hop into the video clip and just also a a quick reminder as well uh tonight on splinterlands tv at 9 p.m eastern we will be giving away 10 Chaos Legion packs. So join us on Splinterlands TV tonight, Sunday, August 14th, and we'll see you then and hopefully have more interesting conversations like this one. So this is some data I was going through when we we're talking about land. And I think this will be interesting because I think you, you still hold a, a decent amount of land as well, right, Dwayne? Uh, I know I you broke your... I might have like 20 plots. I forget how many, but it's, yeah, I've got about 15 or 20 plots. Okay. So, so this would be interesting to, to look at as well from your perspective, I think, as, as a landowner, because, you know, I've, I basically got two sections here. I've got a scenario A and a scenario B outlined. Now, we don't know specifically um, the details of how monsters will work on land and how they'll, you know, basically produce uh, stuff on land. There's been one talk that a summoner and three monsters might be used. Another scenario was a summoner and six monsters, like a team, would be used. So I, I, I drew up scenarios with both of those uh, possibilities in mind. And I specifically want to call out some of the data in the, the yellow boxes. And, you know, basically these columns are if you have one plot of land, 10 plots of land, or if you have a tract of land, as examples, one, 10, and 100, to show the mm. scaling. And if you look at this scenario A, if you were to say that for every plot of land you owned, you'd want to have a max level summoner and max level monsters. What it means is your investment for one plot of land, in addition to the plot of land itself, is about $140 today based on current pricing for the lowest max level summoner, which is General Sloan, and the lowest max level monster, which is roughly about 952 uh, CP for dollars, like a common uh, reward or a rare reward card, right? So yeah. um, that's kind of the data. But then when you extrapolate that to attractive land, what is interesting if you want attractive land, if you want to have max summoners on that attractive land and you just use General Sloan as a lowest price worker you can get, the investment cost here is a little eye opening, right? $13,000 is what yeah. it would cost you. Uh, if you want it, well, obviously it'd be more than that because you, you started buying Sloan's like that, they, the market would adjust. But let's just say $13,000 to buy 100 max level Sloan's. That's a significant investment as a tract owner. And there, remember, there, there are people out there that own regions and multiple regions, which is you know 1,000 or 2,000 plots of land. So you can imagine what that would mean for them. And then if you extrapolate it into this model here with six monsters per land, you can see some of the data. The summoner stays the same, obviously at 13,000, but then the uh, six monsters, if you just use uh, rare reward cards, would be another $1,500 to, to basically staff those that tract of land as an example. But what was interesting to me was when I went through the data, um, the amount of uh, BCX that would be taken off the market essentially that wouldn't be used in the game and couldn't be bought or sold because they were stuck on land working land, right? So it would be 69,000 rare uh, Chaos Legion reward cards as an example or 240,000 common cards would be instantly gone off the market if a, a owner of attractive land maxed out his production using scenario B. And this was interesting because when you do the math, um, when you look at that there's you know 1,500 tracts of land available, so 150,000 plots, and you look at the print rates of, for example, here, a, uh, a common heatsmith or an exploding rat on the rare side, it means that if just um, you know the land itself could consume 
uh, 51 total prints of rare cars, like an exploding rat, a Venari Seedsmith, et cetera, 51 of those types of cards, their entire print rate for, for reward cards, gone, just from, from land workers alone. And for common cards, it would be 45 of those. So, so when, help hmm? me hang on one second. You're, you're saying the based on the projected uh, perceived number of cards required per plot, um, and I have heard, I've heard these numbers too, like one summoner, six monsters, or one summoner, three monsters. And you're saying if it's six monsters, you're saying that it, it could use up 51% of, of rare cards? No, even worse than that. It, it, what I'm saying is if you take a Venari Heats, or excuse me, a Venari um, for rare cards, so a Venari uh, or Exploding Rats, right? Yeah. yeah. It means that... Um, one exploding rat, all two million printed of him. Yeah. Take that times fifty-one cards, like fifty-one exploding rat cards, like an exploding oh. rat, Venari Seed Smith, wow. um, you know, Venari Wave Smith, Venari Crystal Smith. Fifty-one unique cards, their entire print rate, if they were printed at the rate of Chaos Legion reward cards, would be consumed by land if the, if wow. land was maxed out. So remember, in the current um Chaos Legion reward prints. There's only like, what is it, five rares? I forget how many rares are. There's like a neutral, a dragon, and all the splinters, right? So that, what is that, seven seven rares? What I'm saying is yeah. there's there's 44 other rares, in complete entire print runs that would be consumed by land as, as, a, as, a, as a max scenario, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. Because a lot of people say, hey, we overprinted Chaos Legion reward cards. We overprinted Chaos Legion cards. Well, land in and of itself could actually reverse that scenario and put it on its head very quickly, right? And, wow. Yeah. And it's, it's there's four there's four rare cards for each of the Chaos Legion. Um, um from fire to like fire, water, earth, life and death, and then dragon has zero rares, and then neutral has three rares. So that would be 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. There's 23 rares from Chaos Legion. And you said, you're saying 51 rares mm -hmm. uh, would be kind of exhausted. But if if the land was fully farmed, is that is, is that correct? Yep, that is correct. And and this kind of leads to my next slide, which I'll talk about in a second. But just, just I mean, think about that. I mean, that's... That's taking, and that's basically saying these cards aren't going to be used in battles, aren't going to be used in brawls, aren't going to be used in tournaments because they're just farming land. And obviously, you know, this is a uh, kind of a linear, simple comparison because not everyone's just going to take all the seed smiths and put them on land, right? They'll probably have to take some other cards here and there, and there'll be epics and gold foils and other stuff used. But if you want to maximize for the cheapest uh, right now in the market, this is what it looks like. And, and that's, you know, there's just not enough. <laughs> right like wow. like he says it's just not enough of everything so maybe that's why they're making riff watchers is actually a large um i forget the exact number of cards but riff watchers is if for a mini set is actually really significant in how many cards it has i forget how many it has but they i want I, I i think it might have been like 90 or something and or maybe it was even over 100 and um i i I almost can't finish my thought because I actually need to know that number before I really articulate what I'm trying to say. But I believe uh, it boils down to I'm tr I'm tr I, I actually have heard and I have the sense that Rift Watchers is going to be larger than, for instance, Dice was. Because you might say they should be comparable. But in terms of the number of cards, I actually believe Rift Watchers is going to be really significant. And maybe it's in part because they know what you're saying. Yeah, and, and Unreal Chris J says there's 43 cards in Rift Watchers is what's I think been been communicated. Okay, and yes, yeah, three, three million packs, five cards for packs. That's 15 million cards divided by 43 cards, basically at the different drop rates. Okay, 43, and there's like uh, six splinters. So you know you're talking like eight ish, like five 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 ish cards per splinter. Okay, so it is smaller than I. Okay, so there you go. Unreal says 25 for dice and then 43 for Rift Watcher. So it is, you know, practically double. Um, and in part, I, that's probably some some thoughtfulness around what you're describing, I imagine, because they know what they're going to do with land or they have a good idea. 
and they're thinking these exact same things that you're raising. But I, this is, this almost ties into, and I don't want to take the de- derail, but Simran dropped a comment that was um, interesting and perhaps related. He says if he talks about how um, honoring old investments is good and all, but at some point there needs to be a break between old, uh, old players, or I guess only he says only players, but I'm, oh, only players who were here one or three years getting a boost. It will turn off new players when they when they have no way to earn the new. Uh, earn new the same as old players. I, I don't agree, but I would argue, I would say just quickly, um, I think all new players become old players. And so new players should want this game to honor old players because you will be an old player when you've been here for a few years. And that's great for the investments you're making now because it means it's a firm foundation. But the reason I think it's important here is because this, this what you're talking about, and this is really shocking, Tails. Like, all the, these numbers are very surprising. But this could be one of the ways that new players begin now to understand how, for instance, you, you, you called out General Sloan, $113. He is, or sorry, 131 He is, like, the laughing stock of all summoners, really. Like, in terms of cost, he is dirt cheap. And he, his win percentage is quite low. Um, especially at the highest levels and and then but then along comes something like this and so guys who are new maybe they have Sloans because that's all they can afford and they just want to they want a summoner for their white team well this is a new moment a new thing that could be creating new um, desirability and selling pressure like buying pressure for you as a seller to then take advantage of where you are are, are, are being quote unquote honored and I think it's not a direct comparison because alphas and betas get sort of like five or ten percent bonuses on wins, and so this is different. But it's like this is one more way. Splinterlands is always trying to create desirability for the assets they're handing out and for the assets you're buying. And whether you bought it four years ago or whether you're buying four days ago, they are trying to build value into those cards, and this is totally part of that. Yep, absolutely. It's that, it's that track record of, you know, uh, trust, I think, that, that the team has, has built in is, you know, whether you're a player that's played for three years or one year or one day, you know, what they're trying to say is, hey, if you trust us and our vision, you know, you will be rewarded um, based on the game mechanics and the, the, the systems that we put into the game. And, and that's what you want to see, right? You, you don't want them to take away value from those that have invested, but you also want to see them continue to add value through those coming to the game. And I think they're they're balancing both of those, which is great. And like you yeah. said, because in the future, you know, even if your your first day in Splinterlands is today, you know, two years from now, if you continue to do what obviously your your channel is about, Dwayne, is putting your time and attention to the game, you know, you will have substantial assets in Splinterlands just from playing the game and doing nothing more than that. And as such, you know, you'll appreciate you know the the, those efforts two years from now totally i firmly believe that and i and i say that all the time and sometimes people feel i think they 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 seem to think it's like it's just a tagline i'm so convinced that it's true and that anybody who's taking it seriously now is going to be super benefit um like overjoyed in time in the years to come um and i saw a cool video today by gathering the magic who's one of the kind of um, Splinterland faithful. He's been like, he's been, he's always in the chats and he's always, um, he's always around dropping great comments and he does videos too. He, he's a smaller channel. He's only got like a 200 followers or something. You guys should check him out. But he did one today saying, or recently saying, Splinterlands, can I earn, uh, can I earn as a free to play? And he's kind of walked that journey and it's, it's important for new people to see that sort of content because it is possible. It's just like, it's not going to translate overnight into, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. But if it did, that would be something entirely non-sustainable. This is trivial in nature on a daily basis, but those trivial payouts um, add up over time and then snowball in nature because they are deflationary. That means their prices will rise over a long enough time horizon and so 
you might get paid pennies today for playing, but those pennies are paid in non-fungible tokens that will themselves appreciate. And so you get paid two or three Pelicor mercenaries today for your game play, and that's worth two and a half cents. But in three or four years, when Pelicor mercenaries have a dollar each, you know, it that's three or four dollars for those Pelicor mercenaries and times times 365 days times four years. Um, and so that's that's the power of something like this trivial in nature and over the short term, but meaningful in nature because of their deflationary nature across a long enough time horizon. Yep, absolutely. And, and maybe I can share, I think the the with this data the next set of data which i think is even more interesting to look at and maybe more surprising um is it's just adding basically these lines at the bottom these last five or six lines um but it's i think important to look at because you might say and look at these numbers like why would as a tract owner why would i invest thirteen thousand dollars into max summoners for you know my my plots of land we don't know how much you know production of items and spells would even generate an income. You know, you could invest $13,000 just in summoners and get, you know, like 2000 back and that would be a terrible investment of money, right? So there's no indication that people would actually even do what, you know, this chart suggests. And so what I wanted to do is look at that and I, I took some data points for us to see, is it even feasible? You know, ask the question, is it even feasible for a tract owner or a plot owner or a region owner to try and max out their their land for workers would even make sense and if you look at the current card market you know our 24 hour volume right now is forty four thousand six hundred nine dollars which is actually down you know in in good times like in the untamed you know q3 q4 times and even recently when the rank reward changes happened you know we were averaging over a hundred thousand dollars a day in card market sales so we're, we're down a little right now and um the card rental market average for volume is actually up now to $7,309. It was actually half that to start the season. So it's actually doubled here this season, which is good. And then this varies, obviously. But where where you look at this, you would say, okay, if the, the card volume is 44000 and we can say that, and what Matt has said in specifically town halls in the past, is that if you look at the card market volume, that is what you can use as a guide to say what is the market cap of items and spells potentially in the future um he's saying you know basically you could say maybe it's a one-to-one -one or something along those lines so with this we could say well at the current card market volume on a daily basis you know the average plot holder if you have 150,000 plot holders is only going to make 30 cents a day even if you double this to 100,000 it's only 60 cents a day which you would say well there's no reason no way i'm putting thirteen thousand dollars in the summers if I'm only going to make 30 cents a day, but you have to realize that the card market's mature. It's been around for four years and it's not the volume by, by day that you have to look at. It's the total uh, card market cap because when items and spells come into the game, no one's going to have them, right? So there's zero on the market today and in the future, they'll be introduced slowly as uh, landowners make them. So the current card market cap of all the Splinterlands NFT cards is 99.8 million dollars and this is what's very interesting is if you take that card market cap and divide it equally amongst all the available land holders it makes a card market cap per plot holder 665 dollars today now you can get a plot of land right now for i haven't checked hive engine but let's say between 150 and 200 dollars yeah uh, and when you look at this a plot of land to max it out is 131 for a summoner like $15 for monsters. So let's just say $150. So let's say you buy a plot of land for $150, you buy the summoner and the monsters, it's another $150. So $300 is your cost of land. Well, the market cap is saying that roughly that plot of land is worth 2x, more than 2x your investment right now. So the alpha here that I'm sharing with you today is if you think that some of these numbers might make sense, and that what Matt has said could be true and that the item and spell market cap could mirror the card market cap over time, then land plots could be an opportunity. Like we talked about titles earlier, you know, Zig when other people zag, look at opportunities of what's around the corner, what may be a lower priced asset today that could appreciate in the future. 
Well, I'm sharing with the audience today for on Splinter Lands TV some of these numbers so you can look at it and you know take that into your calculations and, and what you want to look at buying here in the future for Splinter Lands. So Wow, dude. That's really mind blowing. And guys, he told me a little bit about this before we got started. Um, but and and shared this with me, but I I mean I'm not, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the toolkit. So like it, it took having to sit through and listen and watch the numbers be explained. Like, oh, and dude, this is mind blowing. This is, this is gigantic stuff. Like the amount of consumption, like I've heard. So, and Dra Dragon commented, he's like, I'm freaking out. He's like, I already knew all this, <laughs> but the numbers make it real. And, and I totally agree. Like I've, I've heard this and I've heard, one summoner you know five or six monsters and and you don't and 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 they, people would say you don't know how many cards that's going to be guys like that's that's going to soak up the rental market and then prices necessarily drive higher it's going to soak up the sale market and then uh, buying and selling prices necessarily drive higher um and then your portfolio takes a a, a positive turn a significant one because there's so much buying buying pressure there um but I, but it isn't. It hasn't been real until I've like, until you point out just like that one that's really slapping me in the face is the fifty-one uh, max level Chaos Legion rare cards being consumed by the land, and there aren't that many. <laughs> um, and then like the market cap probably matt matt said that the market cap is probably going to equal the card market cap, and and that would. Help me on this one part, Tails. That's going to translate if if the card if if the if the items and spell market equates to what we currently understand the card market to equate to. That would be enough to merit to merit like a six hundred and sixty five dollar per plot payout. Is that am I understanding you correctly there? Yeah, I mean, if you do linear extrapolations, obviously the. the Switzerland's economy is much more complicated than straight linear math, but you know here um, the if you extrapolate the current card market cap divided by the uh, available plots of land, um, if if there is a linear equation, now obviously there's a time factor there too, is because it's not like all of the NFTs are going to be available on the market immediately for everyone to consume. So it's actually probably a higher upside longer term on and then this this pricing that's built in, Interesting. but that would be $665 for a plot of land. And obviously the numbers that we're saying here is it's roughly using the six monster model. It's roughly about $150 right now to, to staff that land fully with the cheapest monster summoner combinations, um, which means again, that's, that's a cost of doing business, but you can yeah. imagine that the cost of doing business by doing that is going to increase your productivity to again, generate items and spells, which over wow. time, would generate that value. Now, it's also known that land, a single plot of land is not going to be able to necessarily produce, um, you know, items by itself. It may require some trading and some DeFi elements to get wood or or whatever else you need to create the items that you need. Uh, and there's also factors like you know buildings and DEC and other stuff that we've talked about, which is separate. But in the grand scheme of thing, what it's showing is there's an arbitrage opportunity and potentially the anticipated value of a plot of land and its current selling price. Wow, I suspect that this this like this is to me this is like I said earlier in the beginning of the video like understanding the fundamentals is deeply important and that should inform our understanding of what we and our expectations of what we're what we're looking at here and to me this is like a fundamental breakdown uh, an analysis of like here's the these like the obvious stuff guys like we know. We've been told that it's probably going to look like this. We need this many cards per per plot. That is measurable, and that would do X to to the market. And it's like this seems very well thought out to me. And I actually think this 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 is almost like an action plan to me. But I don't have extra cash at this moment. I would love to get more plots of land. Um, I do think that this is going to have an impact. Like I think people are going to see this, and this is, they're going to be like, oh, okay, well. I can't let one hundred and seventy dollar plots of land exist, um, <laughs> and and rightly or wrongly, like everybody makes their own decisions. And I know you would say like this is not financial advice, but um, I mean this is thoughtful, and it to me resonates as you know logical and fair. Now there are nuance around like, well, 
how big is that item and spell market going to be? And, um, you know, um, there's also going to be things like, we didn't talk about this yet, but some plots of lands will go unused. And that will have some implications for, and it'd be really hard to measure, but certain resources might be even less. Um, like if certain people and tracks or, or regions even are not being utilized, Aggie and Matt have said they'll just kind of be un, unfarmed. And if that's so, then maybe that would mean um, that certain resources would be even more scarce and that would translate to your resources if you were accessing those resources being more profitable. It's so hard to know, but, but this should really stir up some excitement for everybody who's paying attention. Yeah, and obviously there's certainly not financial advice. I mean, don't don't make any decisions based on this alone. But you know, right. the, the the point is, you know, do your own research, right? Do your own research and look into it. But the numbers are out there. If 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 you want to make your own models and and try and understand what this could mean, I just share it with you because I thought it was interesting to look at the numbers when you actually put it on paper and you look at it. And you know, I think it's uh, also interesting that you know, there's there's tons of things you can do in Splinterlands right now. You've got liquidity pools. You've got SPS. Uh, airdrops with the GLS token we've talked about. You know, we've talked about nodes. There, there's so many ways you can play the the non-game of Splinterlands, right? The, the non-ranked battle, the non-guild brawl, the non-tournament uh, part of Splinterlands. And, you know, some people find it fun. Other people don't want to deal with it at all. I, I personally find it fun. I kind of I've talked about it as the game within the game. Um, you know, just kind of it's, it's a way to keep score. And you're keeping score not with points, but with dollars and cents in crypto. Yeah. But, but again, we just never know. Um, the good news here is there's lots of options to consider. And uh, all of those, you know, are probably, you know, Good options. I, again, I don't know. I'm not a financial advisor, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, but obviously I have a like a biased view on this. But I think it's interesting. And one other point I'll make, and I think um, uh, <clears throat> Elephantium and, and Unreal Chris J mentioned as well, is that the number here, 51 for rare and 45 for for common, is based on the reward card print rates. The actual Chaos Legion set itself print rates are actually lower than that, so it'd actually be a higher number if you looked at those cards as well. So, oh. Oh wow. Okay. Um, yeah, man, this is crazy. I need to like. Uh, I'm definitely gonna rewatch this, and I'm gonna think this through more thoroughly. And I mean, I've I've been slowly reacquiring land. I, I attract and I let most of it go um, to buy a variety of things, and I'm glad I did that. But now that prices of land have kind of come down to a place where I'm like, okay, you know this is serious and land is life-changing and I've kind of always thought land to, has like you know and, and remember when you buy a plot of land it could be a common or rare a epic or a legendary it could have a keep or a, a castle it could have totems and da -da 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 -da, buildings and whatnot and it's like it could be this resource or that resource and there are certain ones that will be way more profitable than others and so just like a pack of cards when you open that plot of land, it will have some randomness that could be so amazing, which is really exciting. And I think I've thought for a long time that probably 500 bucks is the base value. Um, that's that's just my mind. Like I, I didn't, I had no numbers like this to kind of bring to the conversation. I just it was like 500 bucks to maybe 5,000. That's my idea of what seems realistic based on one confidence that Splinterlands will do this well to that the in-game card market uh, sorry the item and spell card market uh, not card market the item and spell market will be revolutionary to the game of Splinterlands and that people will continue to want to play Splinterlands so they'll want those assets I think they're going to be game changing because when you see that battlefield set and the, the battle is about to go, but you have another minute or two to drop an item or a spell that can transform that loss into victory. I think that's going to be a big deal. And I think when you when you understand, you know, the leaderboards and when you understand the growing um, um, value of the rewards being paid out um, at a higher level in this game, but also even in brawls now, as we know, SPS is going to be paid out there. I think those items and spells are going to be really... Uh, desired and so 
I yeah, I mean for me I've thought I I've, I've mentally imagined bland is worth between 500 and 5000 um and you know 5000 is going to be those legendaries with the castles and the keeps or whatever and 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 500 is going to be something cheap but um either way that's if I'm if I'm right about that and maybe I am wrong but if I'm right then 175 or whatever it is today is 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 a steal yeah, and it, it goes back just to this whole flywheel that the team is creating. Again, this this value here again is linear. You know, do your own math and make your own assumptions. But you know, if you you know look at these numbers again, if you fully you know staff your land with max monsters, again, this this value is not necessarily related to what happens in the card market when all these cards start getting pulled out of the off the rental market off the sales market off the battle market right and start going to land and then we also haven't talked about necessarily in this stream about what happens to dec when you have buildings on land that you upgrade right what happens to the dec peg and what happens in turn to sps when you burn sps to create more dec so all of these things are working in harmony to ultimately add value and all this stuff is like SPS rank battle awards, all these things are just right around the corner. Again, why would you want items and spells? Well, you want items and spells to increase your win rates to allow you to earn more SPS, right? In ranked battles, in tournaments, in guild brawls. So all of this is is contributing to the overall game experience. And again, if if one thing uplifts like plot value, you can imagine the card market also uplifting values in the game. So it, it, it kind of all works together to create value in the ecosystem. And it's not even talking about, again, the other parallel effects of Genesis Sports League and what the airdrop for the next six months to a year might have on that in the SPS token and NFT drops. And it's just it's just amazing. So when I look at the complexity and the potential for Splinter Lands, this is why I get excited is because this little spreadsheet is just one little aspect of the game that might be with us in let's say six to nine months. And the game that we play in six to nine months will probably look a whole lot different than it does today.